Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, keep praying. Weeping man, do it for a night. But remember, joy comes in the morning. You woke up. You still here. You got a chance to grow in Christ. You got a chance to forgive another person. You got a chance to show love and mercy and grace to other people because God does it for us. And we're supposed to be like God, right? Be like Jesus. So your whole growth has a lot to do with reading this word and studying and seeing how things played out and learning from it. Now, everything in your life is not necessarily going to be in here, but it's something in here to help everything in your life. You'll learn, so you're going to keep learning. I didn't learn as a Christian to never wake up in the morning like, I know it all. I figured it out. And sometimes I feel like that because I feel like I read the same verses over and over again. But it's going to start feeling like that once you read a lot. You'll be like, man, I just read this. Or you're going to be watching a TV show or a movie and you're going to hear scripture. Hear them use God's words for their own. Ain't that crazy? But it is what it is, people. I mean, the Bible said all things work together for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. You're going to start seeing God in so many different forms and fashions that it's going to amaze you that you're going to see your growth and you're going to see the growth of others also and it's going to be amazing our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever Amen. As you forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, people love forgiveness. They love the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and forgave us. But a lot of people don't like to forgive other people. Ain't that an amazing walk as a Christian? You got Christians walking around with hate in their heart. Mm. And he said to hate the man without a cause is sin. Think about this now. To hate a man without a cause. And I know what you're going to say. Well, he sinned just like the Bible said. I'm supposed to hate him. <laughs> and you didn't reread that improperly. He said, love those that use and abuse for you. Use you. Pray for them that spitefully use and abuse for you. Then he said that. Bless them. <laughs> he didn't say hate them at all. Yes, we're supposed to hate sin. But he never said hate people. <laughs> he said love people. Because Christ loved us. And he didn't have to give his life on the cross for us. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's read from Matthew chapter 18. And at the same time came the disciples of the Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? <laughs> And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. One thing we know about children, there's bad children out there for a while, but when he's saying a child, he's talking about a righteous child, a good child. That's what he's talking about. He's not saying be like a bad child, be like a good child. According to what the word says, a good child is, a righteous child is. But just think about a, ch a child. A child has a different type of joy than an adult. Mm. Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God, of heaven. I think when I was growing up, I don't know about now, but in the 80s and 90s, I was born in 81. I'm going to represent the 80s a lot, so get ready. I'm going to represent the 80s and I'm going to represent the Krauss and I'm going to represent the South. And that's where I'm from, Mobile, Alabama. Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. You understand? I just think as a child, when I was growing up in, in high school and middle school and elementary school, you know, you used to always argue with your friends. And sometimes you would fight with them. Now I remember when you used to fight with them, and then you'll be back friends in three days, all the same day. Now, as adults, you notice in your families and stuff, people become more bitter. Sisters and had arguments over time and they just hard now. Their heart is hard now. And they hate even one another. 
can't stand one another. Don't even forgive one another. They hold a grudge. You didn't go to my birthday party. I'm not going to yours. You didn't go to my Christmas party. I'm not going to yours. I hate you. Mm. But we call ourselves Christians. But we get mad at people over the most dumb things. And it's not. It's, it's okay to be upset. He said be angry and sin not. Now think about this. To be angry and sin not. To be angry and somebody do something to you. And you can't start hating them. That's sin. You don't forgive them. That's sin. Whosoever shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such child in my name, receiveth me. Now, you're not going to turn into a child. But you got to tread softly when you become, when you grow as a Christian. Because one thing you don't want to do is push somebody away that God wants to reach. Mm -mm. Now, the thing about it is we can't just evidently know that a person is a child of God. So we can't just walk around. That's a child of God. That's a child of God. That's a child of God. Can't do that. Because you don't know who you might. Now listen. Listen to closer. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. And that he would drown in the death of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offense to come. But woe to that man by whom offenses come. Wherefore if thy hand... Or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life, halt or main, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven there also always Angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Now, to, read, to get the full context of this chapter, you might want to read the whole chapter. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Now, check that out now. You're not going to evidently know who don't need to be saved and who need to be saved. It ain't our job to do that. It's our job to spread seeds. Mm. You know, I've been playing the new Mario Brothers, and I was just playing it, and I was looking at what, what Mario was doing. He was going through gathering seeds for this new city, Wonder City or whatever, and he gathered seeds in order to make places better. Like when you defeat the boss level or each level, you put a seed there, and it cleanses it. And I was like, boy, how can I play Mario Brothers and see God in it? Hmm. Let's go back to what he said. Whosoever does shall humble himself as a little child. Because some people tell you, as an adult, you shouldn't play video games and things like that. I'm a child. <laughs> but anyway, people. I'm not going to beat somebody up over a video game. I'm not going to beat somebody up over a TV show or nothing like that. I know there's some deceitful TV shows out there and some deceitful video games. Use your discernment. But just remember, all things work. God got a way of keeping his, keeping you, keeping his, keeping him on your mind. One way or the other. Just remember that. But he said he can't say that which was lost. So what do you supposed to be trying to do? Gather lost sheep. And it's not like you're going to see a hundred people in the crowd. And the thing is, you got to understand the Holy Spirit. You will read something in the Bible. He was like, and Paul fashioned eyes on him. The Holy Spirit is what helps you discern. We can't discern nothing. We don't know our left hand from our right hand. But the more we study, the better it becomes. How think you if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety and nine and go off into the mountains and seek of that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, if it very I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Now, I, I've read somebody post this in one of their songs. It's the reckless love of God, but he doesn't quote it accurately. And I was like, I know I've read this a thousand times. But he said, a 99 righteous people who went not astray. 
But the thing is, people, one lost child, God is happy about. Now think about it. That's why I say you got to tread softly. You growing as a, in Christ, right? And you're becoming an adult in Christ. And how God tells us to treat the children? A certain way. But you put a rod on the child. You do that. Become as little children. And the thing is, we all want to be children in, in the eyes of the Lord. So don't look at yourself. He said, who's going to be greatest in the kingdom of heaven? People that are childlike. Like a child that uh, let somebody, like I was holding my two grandkids, they two twins. And they just laugh and happy all the time. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Are you mad all the time? Or are you happy? Now I'm not saying you're not gonna you're gonna face tribulation. You're not gonna face tribulation anymore. You're gonna face tribulation. But how are you facing it? With joy? For sometimes not during the time period, but try to be like a little baby. A baby don't judge people. They don't. Now you see some kids just don't like certain people. But you gotta understand one thing. I noticed something. People start training their children a certain way from the moment they're born. That's why God is retraining us as a child. Even so, it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. What he said? He don't want nobody to perish. But the Bible is telling us people are going to perish. But God doesn't want anybody to perish. Now here it goes. More of thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him. His fault between thee and him alone. Oh, Lord, people. We live in a world right now. Somebody piss you off. The first thing you're going to do is go to somebody else. That's not biblical. You have a problem with somebody, you go to them. And he shall, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take one of thee, two or, one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. God even tell us how to handle personal problems. I told you, look at it. You go to the person first. Then after that, you bring somebody around with you so they'll show that you are actually trying to make amends. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Now think about that. The first time when he said two or three witnesses, he didn't say Christians. He said two or three witnesses. <laughs> And the two of, in the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word may be established. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Tell it to the church building. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be un, unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. If you realize what God is saying is, it always has to end with me. Now, we think about the two, the three-step process Jesus just gave us. You go to them first. Then you get some people, you bring them around. Then you go to the church first, and then you leave it there. That's it. Did he say go to the police after that? Come on now. You Christians? He said, why don't you just take wrong? He said, if somebody asks for your tunic, give them your coat also. Give them everything they ask for. Like somebody come try to rob you right now. The Bible said, give them everything they ask Oh, no, he, he say shoot him. No, he say give him. A lot of people probably still be alive right now. And just they, they just gave up that, them pal Jordans. They just gave up that gold chain. Just say, here you go. Just gave up that car. I know I haven't been in a situation like that. Lord forbid I will. But I hope I do what the Bible says do. <laughs> if I'm in that situation, just let it go. It can be replaced. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven or so you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven now let's let's say something about that that seemed very easy i remember in my younger days i looked at that like that you can cut people off and sometimes as a christian the people you cut off you cutting them off from heaven and i used to think that's what it meant but i'm starting to understand something differently don't give up on people because god never gives up on you you may not talk to them, may not communicate with them. You may forgive them, and but don't give up on them. Now, remember what he said. 
One of these little ones that offend me. You don't know who's going to be converted. Don't give up on people so easily. Don't count them out. Mm. Being self-righteous or comparing them to yourself. Again, I say to do that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Now look what he said. Now look at this. Listen to the church here. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So what's church? I hear so many preachers use these scriptures to put the gathering of the saints. I'm not saying nothing is wrong with that, but all it takes is two mm, to be together talking about God. That's church. So you can get two Christian first. Like if people think, well, you just need to run straight to the church. You got to run to God fearing people. Mm -hmm. People who you know fear God and love God, and you come to them for advice. Now, this is the big thing about being careful about that. Because if the advice they give you don't line up with the script, you might want to be weird of that advice too. Now, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you what the word says. I'm not adding to it, but you just have to be careful out here. He's, the Bible tells us to test the spirit, so I'm not telling you nothing that the Bible does not tell you to do. Then came Peter and him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times Jesus said unto him, I say nay. Until thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Let me fast forward through this right quick. What happens here in the next chapter, read it for yourself, in 18. There's a, a servant that goes to the king. He owes debt, owes a lot of debt. Owes a lot of debt, right? And the king was finna throw him in jail, or the Lord was finna throw him in jail for that. And he begged and pleaded, asked for forgiveness, and the king forgave him. Then he went out and found one of his servants that owed him and beat him up and said, pay me everything I owe, you owe me, and he threw him in prison for it. Whoa! Now remember that, that last step. He said, forgive him, take it to the church, and leave it. He wanted judgment, so he took him to court and went to jail. And then the Lord found out about it. In the book, they talking about a king or Lord, but just do the parallels. The Lord forgave him. And then when the Lord found out that he didn't forgive the other man, he was wroth with him. And he placed him in jail. The Lord did. Now remember that now. The Lord did. And the thing is, that's how we are as people. We want God to forgive us. But we won't forgive nobody else. And he said, if you don't forgive your father, I mean, forgive your brothers or sisters, their trespasses, your heavenly father won't forgive you. So for all you self-righteous folks out there, <laughs> listen to him. Because you know, we want to cut people off. That's the first thing we want to do because the Bible said we can lose them. Just like the Bible said, you dust your foot off of their, dust, their, their doorsteps as a testament against them if they don't hear you. But he never said take anything into the, the worldly court system. But we as Christians, we don't like to forgive people. When I say we, I'm talking about us as a whole. Do you understand? Holding grudges, lack of forgiveness in your heart. All you do is, now remember what God is trying to do to your heart. He's trying to take that, make that heart a stone to a softer heart. You see, there's a lot of Christians out there with hard hearts and don't even realize they got hard hearts. They so hard that they're pushing a lot of Christians away. How can I know this? Because I was there. I was one of those Christians that pushed people away who God would bring to me and the way I would present it to them was so harsh and so terrible that I lost many from finding Jesus. 
Now I'm learning. I'm becoming more childlike in my adult growth. Let me pause and I will continue.